Hello again, and welcome to the third and last chapter of Techniques and Methods. Today, we'll talk about data analysis of metabarcoding or amplicon sequencing data. As anything produced by a machine, quality of the product needs to be assessed. Sequencing platforms calculate the error rate of each sequence based and write it in a format called FASTQ. As you can see here, the quality is written underneath each base, not in numbers, but rather in ASCII code. This ensures that there is only one symbol for each base. We can assess the quality of the sequencing by plotting the quality score of the reads. On the y-axis, we have the quality score from 0 to 40, and the x-axis, we have the sequencing basis. A quality score of 20 means that there is a 90% probability that this base was called correctly, whereas a quality of 40 means there was 99.9% percent certainty that this particular base was called correctly. We use this information to decide where to truncate or cut the sequences to remove bases or parts of the sequences with low quality. This is important so we can have confidence in the downstream analysis. As high throughput sequencing platforms generate millions to billions of reads, analyzing each one will be very computer intensive. To avoid that, we can collapse or cluster identical sequences while also recording their abundance. There are two common ways to do that. One, using clustering algorithms to create operational taxonomic units, or OTUs for short. Imagine that these spheres are sequences and their colors show how similar they are to each other. If we group them at 100% similarity, all identical colors or sequences will be clustered together. Instead, if we reduce the similarity to, let's say, 97%, different shades of the same color or very similar sequences will cluster together. We also record the number of sequences inside each cluster, which will then give us the abundance of frequency of OTUs. We can then take only one sequence per cluster, because they are all identical or very similar, and compare them to a database. Doing so, we can know which microorganisms were present in our sample using a much lower number of sequences. Another way to do that is by using a recently published algorithm called DATA2. This method relies on identifying and removing sequencing errors before the remaining sequences are dereplicated, meaning that all identical sequences are clustered together and, of course, their abundance is recorded. We can use representative sequences to assign taxonomy to each cluster. Those are called ASVs, or amplicon sequent variants. Once all OTUs or ASVs are identified, we can record all of this data in a form of a table, as shown here. The first column is the name of the OTU or the ASV, and the following columns correspond to the abundance of each ASV in each sample, followed by a column with their taxonomy. The information is usually saved in a format called Biome or Biological Observation Matrix. Once we have such a table, we can then look at the identity of the observed taxa and their distribution among our samples. We can also infer the interactions among observed species using network analysis or use machine learning to identify biomarkers. However, the most common measure is looking at the community structure. This includes understanding the community composition and species diversity. Diversity is measured by species richness, or simply how many species are in our sample, and evenness, which looks at how those species are evenly distributed within the community. For example, in the community we are looking at now, there are three species with an even distribution. However, if we change the abundance of those species, the evenness will decrease because we now have a dominant species, yet the species richness remains the same. Species diversity is measured by one or both of these indices, or another index that uses a combination of both, such as Shannon index. In the end, we would like to emphasize some limitations of these methods. For example, microbial databases can limit the successful and accurate identifications of microbial species. This is partially due to the presence of many microbial species that are not yet identified. 
and because the classification of micro microorganisms is frequently revised. Also, next generation sequencing technologies produce short reads, which sometimes does not allow the differentiation between closely related species. With these thoughts, we end our module today about techniques and methods. Technologies are the main drivers of microbiome research and are constantly developing. Hopefully, you have now a clear picture on microbiome research, and who knows, maybe you'll become a microbiome researcher yourself. Thank you for your attention.